Hi, this is Mr. Tegmeyer, and we're going to take a look at part two of Simple Machines, where we're going to look at the incline plane, the wedge, and the screw. So, like in our first presentation, uh, an example of an incline plane would be a roller coaster, uh, a wedge would be an axe in this case, and a screw that is actually a car jack, and it's a great example. So let's just do a real quick review on uh, our concepts for IMA and AMA. So the ideal mechanical advantage, remember, is a ratio of distances. It's completely uh, frictionless and an ideal calculation. And here we want to put the effort distance on top and the resistance distance on the bottom. And then, of course, for AMA, remember that is where we do take friction into account and it's just simply a ratio of forces. Here though we flip, we have the resistance force on top and the effort force on the bottom. Remember that is different than IMA. So let's get uh, a look at the three, uh, three simple machines that we have remaining. So an incline plane is really just kind of a ramp. And what that allows us to do is use a smaller effort force to move a, a larger weight up some distance. What we give up, though, is we, we have to push it a farther distance. So let's take a look at an example. Well, here we have a ramp with a cart on it. And uh, we have a height of our ramp of 4 feet and a slope or a length of the ramp of 15 feet. And it's important to know that when we do our calculations for IMA, that IMA is actually the slope of that ramp. It's not the horizontal distance. So when we plug in our numbers in this example, we get 15 feet for the slope uh, or the length, and that's divided by the height. So we get 3.75, or we can write that if we round, as 3.8 to 1 for our ratio. Well, let's take a look at uh, a 50 pound cart. And for a 50 pound cart, we might have to push on that 20 pounds. So in that case, if we just plug in our numbers, our effort force is 50 pounds. I'm sorry, our effort is 20 pounds, excuse me, and our resistance is 50 pounds. So we end up with an AMA of 2.5. Well, that being the case in this example, what's our efficiency? So remember, efficiency is just AMA over IMA times 100. And if we plug in our 2.5 for AMA, which we calculated on this slide above, and 3.75, we get 67%. So next, let's take a look at a wedge. And you can think of a wedge as two incline planes put together back to back, and but it moves. Instead of pushing something up the ramp or up that slope, the incline plane, we move the incline plane. So what, what is shown here is someone splitting wood, and this is a real common application. Uh, another application is called uh, a shim. An example there is I put a new mailbox in my house, and to level that mailbox, I put some wedges or shims underneath it, and I pushed them in far enough so that my mailbox was level, straight up and down. Something to be careful about here in the wedge IMA is that the distance is not the slope but it's perpendicular. So here our L is not the slope, but it's the perpendicular length. In this case, shown here, L is 10 inches. We still have our height of, in this case, 3 inches. So our IMA is L over H. Again, note that L is perpendicular to the height. It is not the slope. So in this case, if we plug in our numbers, we get 10 inches over 3 inches, or 3.3 to 1 for our ratio. What do we get for AMA? For AMA, if, we, if we're pushing on that wedge with 250 pounds, 
what happens is, is we get 700 pounds pushing out from each side. And when we do our AMA calculations, we just have to use 700 pounds, not 1,400 pounds. So when we do that and plug in our numbers, our resistance force is 700 pounds, divided by our effort of 250 pounds, and we get 2.8 to 1. Well, again, we always want to know what the efficiency is. So in this case, using the same formula and plugging in our numbers, 2.8 divided by 3.3, we get 84, which is pretty efficient. Well, next let's look at a screw. Uh, a screw is a special kind of simple machine. And you can think of a screw as a combination of a couple of different things. First, think of an inclined plane wrapped around a cylinder. So that provides what's called uh, a pitch. And I'll talk more about pitch uh, on the next slide. You combine the inclined plane wrapped around the cylinder with a wheel and axle. So what happens to a screw, and you're familiar with screws in everyday life, you turn them. And when you turn a screw, it actually creates, uh, the rotary motion creates linear motion. So that's the, the first bullet here in terms of properties. And it, one big thing to remember about screws is they have a huge mechanical advantage. When you think about uh, the example given on one of the first slides, I showed a picture of a car jack. So when you're jacking up a car, uh, you might need uh, 20, maybe even 30 pounds, which is a lot, but let's say 20 pounds to turn the screw. And what you're lifting is several thousand pounds. So you have a very, very large mechanical advantage. But you also have to move that screw or, or turn the screw. Your hand turns a long distance to lift the car a short distance. So that's the trade-off. Also, one thing about the screw is we have a very large friction loss. So physically, what that might tell us is our efficiency might be pretty low. We'll go through an example and we'll find out if that's true. Well, one of the things we want to know about screws are how to identify them. And so we have some new words here and some thread identification to go over. So first things first, let's talk about the word pitch. Pitch is really just the distance between threads. So a thread, if you look at that screw, the cylinder part, it has kind of some peaks and valleys in it. And you've all seen screws. So the pitch is the distance between two threads. So if you look at thread information, we would identify this, we would say uh, 1 half 13 NC. For now, you can forget about NC. That's just a designation of the kind of um, thread that it is. The 13 is the pitch, or it's actually the, the threads per inch. So here we have 13. So for each turn of the screw, for each revolution, one revolution, 360 degrees, it moves one thirteenth of an inch. And the diameter of the screw is one half inch in this case. So in the blue here, and I kind of already mentioned this, if we turn one revolution of that screw, it's going to move one thirteenth of an inch. So now let's look at a, uh, an example. Here we have a screw designated uh, 1 4th 20 NC. So let's look at IMA. So IMA, we use the same formula, effort distance over resistance distance, but we kind of use some special things. So our uh, effort distance is really just the circumference. So we're going to assume that uh, we do at least one full rotation of that screw. So circumference, we know what that is. That's 2 pi times r. We'll come back to that in a second. Our linear distance, then, for each one rotation, remember from the last slide, for each one rotation, it's going to move the distance between the threads. It's going to move horizontally, or in this case, vertically, I guess. So our dr is just the pitch, or in this case, it would be 1 over 20 or 1 20th of an inch. 
So let's plug some numbers in and see what we get. So for IMA, it's just circumference, which is 2 pi r. r is just the radius of our effort, and p is the pitch. So if we had an 8 inch long wrench, and we, used, and we applied our effort at that 8 inches from the middle, what do, what do those numbers look like? So our circumference is 2 pi times that 8 inches. That would be one revolution. And in that one revolution, 360 degrees, one full turn, it would move 1 20th of an inch, which is our pitch. So when we do all that math, we get an IMA that's huge. In this case, it's actually 1,005.31. And you can write that in engineering or scientific notation as 1.0 times 10 to the third. Huge. And that's what we would expect. By that same token, that same screw, uh, let's look at what the AMA is. So we put 35 pounds of force on it, and we can actually move 1,200 pounds. That's pretty large. And we do that math. There's no tricks here with the circumference or pitch. It's just a straightforward force divided by a force. That math turns out to be 34.29. And of course, we want to know what the efficiency of that screw is. So remember the, a couple of slides ago when we talked about friction and we, I asked the question uh, or made the statement that we might expect low efficiency. Let's see what we get. It's the same formula as before. AMA over IMA times 100. And we plug in our numbers, 34.29 for our AMA, 1,005.3, and we get 3.4%. Not real efficient. So what we're giving up here is we have a, a very large distance to travel, so we have a lot of rotations. Think about your the car jack again. So as I'm jacking up my car, I'm moving, uh, I'm moving my hand and I'm moving my crank. Lots, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of time, a lot of distance. And in return for moving the car up a shorter distance. That's why our efficiency is so low. But what we gain is a low effort force to lift that 1,000 pound, 2,000 pound car. And that is why our efficiency is so low. So this concludes the second presentation on Simple Machines.